Hi, I'm Scott from Rec Tech Tools. The following is a video on our clutch setup tool that we've designed for the 50cc dirt bikes and quads that utilize a three shoe centrifugal clutch. We feel that it's going to take clutch tuning to the next level. Before we get into showing you our new clutch setup tool, there's a few things that we need to know about clutches themselves. All good tuners will tell you that the spring stack is the key tuning component of the clutch. They'll also tell you that the spring stack height is has to be exact to get a good clutch engagement for the right power band. One of the things that a lot of people don't talk about though is you can have three spring stacks that won't equal the same pressure. If the pressures aren't equal, the shoes won't come out the same and you won't have the proper engagement. But there's also other components involved with the clutch that cause the spring stack pressure not to be equal. We're going to go over a few of them. Uh, we have our spring stack. But typically what happens, the first thing that we have is drum wear. If the drum is oversized, the shoe will have to fly out further to make contact, which increases RPM engagement. If the shoe itself is worn on the shoe surface, it will have to fly out, which increases pressure and causes higher engagement. If we have a wear internally where the spring stack rests against, that can change spring pressures causing engagement changes. On the arbor itself, where the bolt screws into, if it's over tightened or not torqued properly, uh, we can change our spring pressure. And last but not least, we can have a dirty spring stack. In other words, dirt getting in between the springs, causing them to stack or pile up increasing pressure. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people don't realize uh, springs themselves and there's a lot of companies out there uh, on the national level even for racing that developed have developed new springs or better spring designs uh, still the Belleville washer style but a better quality spring I have a sample here I'm going to show you to get into a little more detail these two items in front of you what I did is I bent two pieces of steel to simulate two springs um, as you see, the two edges of the springs make contact. When the shoe engages, it tries to flatten the spring. So we have to look at realistically what happens. The two corners here that are sharp uh, are actually like my two fingertips touching each other. At any given time, and especially from centrifugal force, these two springs can misalign. Every time those springs misalign, you create a different spring pressure. Uh, one of the key things, and a lot of good tuners out there do it already, is this spring has a razor sharp edge. This one, what we did is we took, and you can see the edges here, they're shiny. We took them on a piece of emery cloth, slid them around, and flattened the springs. Uh, people say, why would you do that? Well, if you have two flat surfaces, they can have a certain amount of misalignment without changing spring pressure. Um, this is a little trick that a lot of the, the real good tuners do now. So what I'm going to do is this leads us into our new tool. Uh, everybody has the calipers to measure spring stack, but not everybody, or there, as far as we know, there is no tool out there right now designed to be able to check all of these variables and to tell you the exact spring pressure of your clutch. Now we're going to go over some of the basic components in the unit and how we designed it. Uh, we designed the unit to be lightweight and easy to use. Uh, we also made it so it would go in any shop trader vise or workbench. And what we have here for a sample is just a small drill press vise. Uh, all it does is just set down in and clamp down. Uh, to start on the bottom, we have a, a, a really accurate digital pressure gauge system. Uh, we have the holder for your arbor and your three shoes. We have the jack screw, which actually applies the pressure, and then we have an adjustable digital uh, meter here up top to tell you how far you've made the travel of the shoes. Now we're briefly going to go over the procedure for using the gauge. Uh, because this is a really accurate digital pressure gauge, we have to zero it out. So what we'll start with is we got our clutch holder for our arbor. Uh, we happen to have here a three shoe clutch. This happens to be out of a Cobra. Uh, we've set each spring stack, clean spring stack, at about 0.533 just for a sample. Uh, what we take and do is we slide one of the holder pins on. We'll leave the other one loose. We set it on. 
and we make contact. Now you'll see a pointer here at the end. Uh, we always say to apply just a little bit of oil because that gives more consistency to the tool. You'll just slide it up and run it through. Now your clutch arbor is actually set in there proper. Now here's where we take and we get ready to zero our gauge. Because this is accuracy is crucial, we'll let the weight of the clutch and the weight of the clutch holder set on the gauge. Now I'm going to have one of my guys hold the gauge up in front of the camera there for you so you can see how to zero it. Take just a second here so we can get a good picture for you. Now you're going to see numbers on that gauge. What he's going to do is press the zero button. Go ahead and press the zero button on the gauge. He's going to hold it in until you see a series of lines. Once you see the lines and let off, now you're at zero. That is zero the gauge for zero pressure. After he's zeroed the gauge, and I'm going to do this here on my own, what we take and do is, uh, I'll zero it out here on mine. We're going to screw this down until we get approximately, and the, the pressure doesn't matter, it's just that you always use the same pressure. So we're going to screw it down until we have about six pounds on the gauge. What that does is that lets the springs themselves actually stabilize each other. After that, we're going to set our dial indicator up top here, and I'm going to have him zoom in on this dial indicator if he can. You got her there? Alright, so what we'll do is we'll lower the dial indicator on, and we make it go about a revolution. And then we'll take the knob and we'll zero it out. Hopefully you can see this. Now, what this does is this sets our travel that the clutch shoes move. We said before in the previous part of our video that 60 thousandths is about the movement of a normal clutch shoe to, before it makes contact with the drum. So that's the movement that the springs see. So here's where we get to check all three equal spring stacks to make sure that the pressure is the same. Um, we're on zero. Uh, this gauge reads both ways. Because it turns backwards, you'll see some small red numbers. What we'll do is 60 thousandths, which will take us over here to the 40. What we do is we just turn it, and this is applying pressure to the clutch shoe like it would see in the engine. And I'm looking at this from behind so it doesn't show up quite as well. I'm at uh, 60 thousandths movement. What's just happened is this arbor has moved 60 thousandths, just like it would in the bike or the quad. I'm reading my pressure here. Uh, it's reading like 205. What we do recommend doing is to back it off. Go back to the poundage on the gauge that you started with, and that typically gets you right back at the zero, and then reset it again. What we found that seems like the first time that you check a clutch, you have to fully compress the springs to get them to seat proper. Um, that's where, where we talked about the edges of the springs versus the flats uh, touching. That's where that comes in. Now this settled in at 200 pounds, and it's yeah, it's right at 200 pounds. Okay, what we'll do is we'll back that out. And the quickest way, and you don't have to take it all the way out, you just pull it out, pull one pin, take it off, and we'll just rotate it. Now we've got our arbor, and I'm doing this fumbling around because I'm doing it from the back. We'll take our arbor, set it back on. Bear with me here, I gotta get where I'm supposed to be at. Put our pin back through. We'll do our same thing. We'll set the same amount of pressure we had on the gauge before. We will now re-zero our dial. We'll do a test. Back to our 60. Whoops. And on this one we're reading approximately 192. I'm going to back it off like I said to do before. And we'll reset it at our starting pressure again. And we'll go back to 60. We settle in at approximately 192. Um, this one stayed the same because we've been pushing on it probably several times. My point being, the first one was actually at 200 pounds. This is at 192 pounds. We've got 8 pounds difference in shoes with the exact same spring stack. 
What that tells me is our 200 pound spring stack is going to engage the clutch a lot later than the 192 pound one. Where the key to the accuracy comes in is if we can get these within and what we found, if we can get them within about two pounds of each other, we've seen big differences in clutch engagement, we've seen differences in clutch heat, uh, oil contamination, all sorts of things. The more you can get all three shoes hooking up at one time, the better off you are. We've also experimented with higher pressures versus lower pressures. Uh, it's made a world of difference in tuning. We designed this tool for the tuners, the, the racers themselves, whoever wants to get more accuracy and just basically take tuning to the next level. Um, I hope this answered most of your questions. These tools are available now. Uh, you can contact us at recmotor.com uh, and go to Rec Tech Tool button and have a description. Uh, you'll be glad to chat with you about them. Uh, this is something that uh, we've sold already and the people that have had them have been very satisfied. So thank you very much for watching the video and hope the tool works for you.